for the privilege of participating in this inaugural prayer service. This is a very significant day. It occurred to me, though, as I was thinking about the significance of the day, how easy it is for people to miss the significant things in life. Thinking about this inauguration, I was reminded of the inaugural flight of the Wright Brothers. The Wright Brothers, as you know, had owned and operated a bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio. And in 1899, they began some aeronautical experiments. First with gliders and then with the use of engines. Finally, on December 17th, 1903, at Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, they accomplished what had never been done before. They flew a heavier than air craft from 120 feet. Elated, they wired their sister the good news, the historic news, and they sent to Catherine in this telegram these words, we have actually flown 120 feet, stop. We'll be home for Christmas, stop. When Catherine received the telegram, she immediately took it to the editor of the Daily newspaper in Dayton, Ohio. The next day, the headline read, local bike merchants to be home for Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> well, some people have trouble grasping the significance of an event in a moment. Today is a significant event for you, Governor-elect Greitens, and for you, Mrs. Greitens. As you become the 56th governor of the state of Missouri, it's also a significant day for those who will be assuming office alongside you today. And it's a very significant day for the people of the state of Missouri. For the governor, more than any other person in the state, can affect the lives of the people of this state. This marks a day of great significance and a great opportunity. And the wonderful news is this, that God takes such an interest in this. That these kind of events don't escape his notice. He cares deeply about them. You can't read through the Bible without coming to the conclusion that God not only cares about the lives of prophets and priests, but God cares about the lives, the heart, and the actions of those who will lead in government. So I was thinking about this inauguration day and about serving with integrity. My mind turned to 1 Kings chapter 3, where a young leader by the name of Solomon had been selected as king. And the Bible says that Solomon, as he slept, had a dream. You have to believe that dream must have been born of the anxiety of the moment where he is taking on the leadership from a man who had served so well, his father. And in that, in that night of anxiety, in that night of wrestling, the Lord appears to him. And the Lord says to him, ask whatever you want and I'll give it to you. That's an amazing statement by the Lord. What would you ask for if God asked you, what do you want? I'll give you anything. Most people might ask for prosperity. They might ask for power. Some would ask for wealth or protection from the attacks of enemies. And surely those things must have entered into Solomon's mind. But as Solomon was thinking about that request, his mind turned to the people. That God had set him to serve and the responsibility that he would have as a leader of those people. And so here is what he said. O Lord my God, you have made your servant king. So give your servant a discerning heart to govern your people. Some translations render, give me wisdom. When Solomon thought of all the things that he could have, all of the things that God could give. He requested wisdom. He wanted wisdom more than popularity. He wanted wisdom more than power or prosperity. 
not everyone understands what wisdom is. Wisdom is not just knowledge. When a person has knowledge, but they don't have wisdom, at best they're clever, and at worst they're a monster. Wisdom is different than knowledge. To be sure, there's a practical wisdom that people acquire over time and through experience. It comes from not only learning things yourself, but learning from others. But the Bible says that there is a wisdom that comes from above. A wisdom that James chapter 3 says pursues peace. A wisdom that is gentle. A wisdom that is full of mercy. A wisdom that is demonstrated by good deeds. This wisdom is not something that is humanly attainable through experience, through ability, through mentoring. This is a wisdom, an insight that you could think of as a sixth sense, as an intuition, a divine intuition. And it isn't just for a person's private life. And it's not just for a person's spiritual life. But as you see in Solomon's story, it's a wisdom that directly impacts public service. Solomon asked for wisdom because Solomon was taking the responsibility of governmental leadership. He wanted to govern successfully and effectively, and he knew that to do that, the most valuable thing he could possess was wisdom. Foolish leadership helps no one. And so we ask God for a discerning heart. Literally, in the Hebrew, it's a listening heart. It's, God, I want to hear your voice. I want to be sensitive to your prompting. The text says, a heart to know right from wrong. Think of it this way as a heart to know the right choice in every single decision. Honestly, the complexities of government can boggle the mind and decisions are rarely as simple as right versus wrong and good versus evil, though at times they may, may be that. Many times the decisions come down to choosing between the good, the better, and the best. And Solomon said, God, I want a heart that can do that. And the Bible says... God was pleased by that request. He said, I'll give you a wise and discerning heart. And when you read the record of his governmental accomplishment, it's astonishing. Today, as you take the reins of government, and you face the challenges of leadership, it's appropriate we're in a prayer service. Because we need the help of the Lord. As a country, as a state, in the counties, in the communities, across this land, we need the Lord to go before us. And so it's appropriate that we pray. Can I, can I assure you, those who are taking office, that people will be praying for you across the state. That churches will be praying for you. Individuals will be praying for you. But as you pray, please don't ever substitute the fact that people are praying for you, for the need for you to pray for yourself. And to boldly go to God, believing God sees where you're at, cares about what you're doing, and wants to help you to be successful and effective. And when you ask for wisdom, He will give it. Every day I pray this prayer for the people of the church I pastor. And I say these words over them at the close of every service. And today, especially for you, Governor Lake Wrightons, this is my prayer for you. And my covenant to pray for you as you leave this state. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. To the praise of his glory, the blessing of your life, and the blessing of the people of this state.